Welcome back to a, another political talk. I hope you all had a Merry Christmas. I have been super, super busy these past couple weeks, so I have not been, out, been able to get on here and talk about politics. But today we're going to be talking about originalism versus textualism. What is originalism? Merriam-Webster's definition is a legal philosophy that the words and documents, and especially the U.S. Constitution, should be interpreted as they were understood at the time they were written. What is textualism? Merriam-Webster's definition is a legal philosophy that the laws and legal documents, such as the U.S. Constitution, should be interpreted by considering only the words used in document, in law or document, as they are commonly understood. I'm reading from the Christian Science Monitor page about originalism. There is no question that originalism has changed constitutional law says Fernanda Tolson, a professor at the University of Southern California Gold School of Law. History and texts are much more of a focus than they used to be. History is the starting point as well as text is the starting point. And I think originalism reminds us of that. She says, adding that she doesn't think philosophy is inherently bad. But as a society, do we want to be constrained by the views of men that died 200 years ago? And more importantly, does the Constitution require that? I'm pretty sure, but don't quote me on this, Teddy Roosevelt said this exact same thing when he was in office. Herbert Hoover said something just like this, saying, The Constitution doesn't matter. It's just a piece of paper. Freenita continues saying, To me, that's the question. Starting point versus end point. Critics view originalism as a theory that is misleading at best making promises of judicial restraint and impartiality that won't deliver in practice. But the philosophy comes in a variety of styles and flavors. Practice differs from theory, and as well with any legal theory, it has its disagreements and flaws. Another person writes, I consider originalism to be the natural and normal way in which anyone would interpret or at least begin to interpret a text written more than 200 years ago. Says Michael McConnell, a professor at Stanford Law School and former judge of the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals. He says when judges latch on to the language of the Constitution and give it their own preferred interpretation, he adds, they're not really doing constitutional law. They're just doing a form of politics wearing a robe. I completely agree with Michael McConnell. Now, one of the men in American history that people call a originalist is Joseph Story. He was not an originalist. He was instead a textualist. Story was one of the youngest men to be appointed by James Madison to the Supreme Court. He's also a very bad historian, but people loved him. Story said America, Americans were one people during the colonial period as subjects of the British crown. Domestic concerns aside, they represented a nation. The Continental Congress was formed by one people, and the Union predated the states. None of this happened. This is all fiction. The Continental Congress was formed by delegates from the states, not by one people. The Union wasn't formed until the Articles of Confederation. Story argued that the antecedent to the Declaration of Independence, none of the colonies were or pretended to be sovereign states, in the sense in which term sovereign is sometimes applied to the states. That's not true either. To Story, the people were <coughs> sovereign, not the states. <coughs> <coughs> which reduced the states to administrative subdivisions. He also said the declaration was by the people in aggregate and not the states. That is also not true. People often say the United States was created by the people, which is true in a sense, but the United States was actually created by the states. All the states had to come together, right? Because the branches consist of legislative, judiciary, executive, and the states, not the people. If you think of it like a table, you have the four legs, branches. 
Without one, the table will fall, be unsteady. Textualism is very dangerous. Textualists can take any part of the Constitution and interpret in the way they believe is right. So we have the Democrats and Republicans and whoever in office. Look at what they're saying. Are they interpreting the Constitution the way they think is right? Or are they interpreting it the way that the founders believed? In this day, we have so many textualists. And it is destroying our economy little by little. So just think about that when someone gets up and starts saying they're going to do this and this and this. Are they interpreting the Constitution the way they believe? Or are they doing it by how the founders believed? Thanks for listening. I hope you guys have a great day.